week six energetics. This is one of my, I know every week I'm like, this is one of my favorite topics, but seriously, all of these topics are just epic and all of my favorites, but energetics is really, truly uh, the most important factor in everything that we've talked about so far. So throughout this presentation, you are going to understand energetics as our primary avenue and ways of communication, um, understand how to intentionally influence the energetic dynamic, and learn ways to positively influence those energetics. Verbal spoken language is actually our second language. So you taking in what I'm saying right now, some of you are from a different country, so English might even be your third language. Your primary language is actually nonverbal communication or energetics. Verbal language is something that you learn, you know, after two years old, but energetics you are learning even when you're in the womb. We're going to talk more about that. So our primary language is energetics. It's that nonverbal communication. We've brought up this bubble before in a prior presentation in the nervous system. So you have this electromagnetic field that emits from your physical body that's associated with your nervous system. So your nervous system is always communicating to you and to other people. It emits these this energy into that bubble. And so if there's a person that is six feet away from you and they feel an energy from you, their body takes in that communication and it processes it before you're even able to logically know what's happening. So I think I used this uh, example before, but again, when someone walks into the room and they're angry or they're irritable, you can tell because they give off a vibration, you probably feel some sort of shift in your body and your nervous system is already responding before you even know that you may, might need to separate yourself from this person or maybe limit conversation you might notice that you're more tense around them or you're girding your teeth. These things are subtle cues that your nervous system is picking up on the primary language of our ability to read the energetics of people in and around you, as well as how you are feeling. What is your emotional state? How is that influencing your interactions and behavior in the world? Nonverbal communication is also body language, tone of voice, these things that are that give flavor to the words that I'm saying. Because I can say, I'm mad at you, right? And you might not think it's as serious because my facial expressions, my the tone of my voice. So the language that we're actually using, the spoken word, often causes conflict because we're trying to give a way to communicate the feelings that we're having inside. And if we don't explore the feelings that we're having inside and be able to contextualize them, give them more, um, more tangible ways of another person to be able to understand how we're trying to communicate that to the person, no wonder there's so much conflict when we try to have just verbal conversations with people. So when I work with people one-on-one, -on -one, a big part of what we do is getting into the energetics of first and foremost, how you feel, what sort of vibe you are emitting into the environment and how other people are influencing you and vice versa, how you're influencing them. How energetics communicate. So what the word that is actually being emitted and being read by your nervous system is a process called neuroception. It's your sixth sense. You have more than five senses. Neuroception is your ability of your nervous system to constantly scan the environment. So it's always on alert. It's scanning the environment for cues of safety and danger and threat, even before we can consciously perceive them. Neuroception helps us to assess whether we are safe or potentially in a harmful situation, and it influences our emotional and behavioral responses. So this is, again, as soon as you feel a very subtle shift in the, um, in the 
vibe of a room this is especially true when you have like little kids that you're protecting your you know moms are generally more sensitive to the energies that their children are around because they have to worry about the safety of their kids so they're more high on alert they're higher on alert because they have to be mindful of is this situation safe for my child this is huge for people who are also experiencing difficulties in their relationship and they have kids because there's a correlation between higher stress, higher risk, right? And your ability to want to or desire sex and intimacy because your nervous system is just on high alert. It's hypersensitive to your environment. So again, in one-on-one -on -one work with people, I really help them to be able to create safety in their nervous system to find grounding techniques that you can use to notice, okay, I'm feeling this type of way. Let me actually scan the environment with more intention to actually determine if this is a safe situation or not. If it is actually safe and I'm just kind of projecting my own insecurities or fear into this experience, how do I find peace, safety, calm in myself so that I start to be able to locate those pieces of um, peace, calm, and anchored states in the external environment. Because again, whatever you're feeling in here is going to be projected out into your external environment, and you will start to locate all the opportunities to be more fearful of your environment. But on the opposite side, if you're able to ground yourself, feel peaceful and anchored in yourself, then you'll start to be projected those things will start to be projected on the outside of you and you'll realize all of the resources that you have in your immediate environment that actually are peaceful and safe. So self-regulation happening um, in real time when we take a deep dive at what are the associations that you're making with your environment? How does it influence past experiences and how do we rewire that behavior so it's more in alignment with having a healthy and resilient reaction to stress? So again, um, just to add some more to this. So your nervous system involves the, the detection of very subtle cues. So facial expressions, if my face all of a sudden changed, right? You'd be like, oh my gosh, what happened? Your children are also really, really good at, good at reading facial expressions. There's been studies that show a mom like really happy in how the baby's responding. And all of a sudden she goes very flat affect and the baby freaks out. So facial expressions really, really influence others around you. Vocal tone. Again, if I said, I'm really mad at you, right? And I was actually like really mad. You'd be like, that doesn't match. I don't know if she's actually mad or if she's like just kidding. Vocal tone influences the way that you perceive someone's state of being body language. So if I was very contracted in the way that I was sitting, had my arms crossed, I wouldn't feel very approachable to you. Um, so you might adjust the way that you speak to me or the positioning of your body in order to be in more defensive stance. Because if I'm in a defensive stance, chances are you'll stand in a defensive stance unless you know what's going on and you want to evoke a more open response from me. You might slowly and gently open your arms to evoke a sense of safety in the other person. Also, environmental cues. So if there's something happening in your external environment that you start to piece together, this could be dangerous. Your nervous system is already setting up a response just in case that thing happens. So it's always informing our nervous system about safety or danger of a situation. And this is extremely influenced. Um, we talked a lot about the nervous system and chronic stress creating states of hyper arousal. So when you're in, you have a chronically stressful life and you, you notice that you don't really spend much time in a state of presence or peace or calm, these cues be can become more threatening or a higher threat value which creates, causes you to hyper react or be hypersensitive to all of these things, which puts you in a perpetual state of stress and survival, survival mode, or even overwhelm. And we know that when you are in states of stress or overwhelm, it's very hard to want to engage in any sort of 
connection, intimate, or just in general connecting with anyone when you are in those hyper aroused states. We've also seen this picture again, but it's, I really love to reiterate the most important photos and concepts. When you are in a fear-based emotional state, your Taurus shrinks for survival. It gets smaller and starts to pull energy from other people. This is when you start to feel like an energy vampire. Sometimes this happens in relationships where the wife is like living in fear because so many different things are happening and she her system has become very dysregulated. And maybe she starts to pull lots of energy from the husband who is like oblivious to the things that are happening um, because the communication is just not there to be able to describe what's going on in each of your experience. And you're like, oh my gosh, I'm so fatigued around this person. And this is not just relationships, but for the sake of talking about intimacy, um, it could be with a friend or a coworker, people who are in these fear-based survival mode states really start to suck energy from people who are living in higher vibrational states. So the people on the left would be very hypersensitive to any stimuli, and they're also really trying to pull energy to sustain life and to help find safety. Another thing that happens when our nervous system is hyper aroused to stimuli from our environment or we're hypersensitive or we feel fearful lots of times, our nervous system beca can become out of sync. So on the left-hand side there, you see what an out of sync, incoherent or out of tune instrument that is our body starts to turn into. So it creates, it sends out these messages that are really confusing, really conflicting, um, maybe very emotional or just you're like, gosh, their behavior doesn't really make much sense. It's like up and down and up and down. And this is the result of lots of sensitivity really influencing the energetics and the energetic vibrational coherence of that person's system. On the other hand, when you do work on energetics, you understand how your emotional state affects your nervous system, which affects your vibration. And you're really in tune with that concept. And you work to regulate your system to be able to experience greater emotional states, higher vibrational emotional states. It helps to create harmony in your body system. So you start to become in tune, in sync, or coherent. The more coherent you feel, the better you'll feel to your partner. The more incoherent, out of sync, chaotic that you feel, it starts to send really, uh, really, it starts to send um, information out into the field that is very chaotic, disorganized, confusing. So your body is constantly responding with, you, you are constantly responding with your body before your logical mind can attempt to make sense of the situation. So your body is sending out these signals and then your mind is having to say like, what is going on there? It's a subconscious felt experience so getting comfortable or familiar with the sensation of your body will help you to better navigate energetics because again, it's all starting from the body. The body is experiencing an emotion, sends it out into the field, which is then perceived by other people and causes them to be influenced by your emotional state. So, okay, now we're at the how, ways to really get into like, how do I influence energetics? So first is assess what vibe or energy you're emitting into the field. You can use this chart, try to move myself out of the way. I never know where I'm at. Um, you can use this chart. If you can identify where you are in the current moment right now, like what emotion do you mostly resonate with? The ones on the top are more towards a love vibration. There are the Taurus expanding out where it's more coherent. You feel positive to others around you. And as soon as you drop under boredom, you start to, your Taurus starts to shrink and you start to go into survival mode, out of sync or an in incoherent state. So you can use this spiral to determine what is my influence on others as far as my energy field and my electromagnetic field. 
Number two is to adjust your vibe and your body language. All of these body languages, even just seeing them, might cause you to tense up or feel anxious because they're not um, evoking states of, yes, I want to connect. Yes, I want to navigate this conflict together. Yes, I am seeking connection and comfort, right? They're all kind of combative or conflicting, um, repelling any sort of connection in this one where they're sitting you know, one is sitting uh, forward, the other one is sitting away from them. This other one, they're cross crossing their arms over their body. So these are all states that your nervous system would then go ahead and read and say, well, they must be mad. So I need to approach them with more defense, uh, defense. Um, or I might need to brace in order to be prepared for the impact of what they're about to tell me. And as soon as you do that, you lose sight uh, of being resourceful to all the different possibilities of what could potentially happen in this interaction. And it just honestly escalates lots of conflict. These are all ways that if you are feeling like I need to check in with my body language, what's a good way that I can be more open and receptive and want seeking um, more connection with my partner. This bottom one, I know their arms are crossed, but they're making eye contact and they're actually laying down. And when you lay on the ground and try to talk about something, it's you can't help but laugh. And so as soon as you laugh, you make light of it, then you can start to say like, okay, this not is not that huge of a deal. Let's try to navigate through this with a little bit more love and humor. The top one is just simply just like touching your partner and being near them. Um, and then the one on the right, actually like holding hands, being heart to heart in front of each other, looking at each other's eyes with love. Um, those are all ways that you can really intentionally use body language to help you in states of um, more stress and, and conflict or, or just to connect with them in a more intimate way. This is another graph that just shows when you energetics, the more that you are your energy or your emotional state is more towards the left. So you have that frustrated energy, resentful energy, apathy, sadness, anger, anxiety. When you're experiencing those energetic states, it creates a negative vibration and you move towards depletion of your physical health. This is the HeartMath Institute. They do lots of research on how heart rate variability is affected by your emotional state. So when you are in um, energetic emotional states on the left, you're moving more towards survival mode. You're moving more towards incoherence, more illness and disease. On the right-hand side, you can say, you see that uh, waveform is more organized. It's more uniform. It's more incoherent. It's more coherent, excuse me, harmonic and in sync. You're moving towards love and appreciation, and that's what vibrates out into the field. Children are extremely responsive to energetics. So if you have the ability to interact with kids and try energetics, this is a really, they're really great to try this with. So you obviously don't want to stay in negative states for too long because they will be negatively affected by your negative state, but you can fo focus on how is my positive um, emotional state affecting the situation. You also know if you come home from work and you have are having a bad day, just pay attention to what their behavior is like because you're sending out mixed signals to them, incoherent uh, signals to them which can evoke anxiety and then anxiety causes them to have more energy or be more disruptive or irritable. So just pay attention to how your specific mood affects them because they're super receptive to it. Also, animals are very uh, in tune with energetics. So they only speak energy. They will come near you or go away from you depending on if they think that you're threatening or not. So you can practice like getting into an emotional state and it's just seeing how animals start to respond to you. I swear it's so funny. Every time I work with clients and they have pets, they end up starting to come onto the screen, onto the Zoom screen, because the people that I'm working with are starting to feel so good that these animals like just like want to be around them all the time. They're jumping up onto the screen. They're sitting next to them. They always make an appearance. So it's cool to see as the person changes how animals respond to them too. As a review, 
Energetics are our primary language. Understanding energetics can help you navigate and influence the relationship dynamic. Energetics include nonverbal language, tone of voice, shifts in emotional states, and emotion, environmental cues. Animals and children are the most responsive to energetics. And the last point I want to just reiterate is that when you, when you notice that you energetically are in a state of survival mode, um, it, you immediately turn off to intimacy and connection. So if you are in states, emotional states that are causing that incoherence, chances are you are very hypersensitive to the environment or to things that are happening. And it's, it's not your fault that you are, have low libido or that you're not seeking connection. It's just you're, you're being influenced. Your nervous system is being influenced by those energetics and it's trying to keep you safe. And if it continues to be an issue, you know where I'm at. This is what I love to do. So I'm always here to support and help you in whatever way feels good for you. Your homework is energetics exercise. So you're going to choose an emotional state that feels available to you. So you can look back on that spiral. Sit quietly and close your eyes. You can do this now while I'm kind of reading you through it. And you're going to think of a time where you felt that emotion. And think about that emotion in, in the center of your heart. And every time that you focus on it, it gets bigger and bigger and starts to fully embody your experience. You let yourself feel that emotion fully. So it takes up your whole body, out the top of your head, out the bottom of your feet, out your fingertips. And now you're just emanating with this emotion. And then you're going to become aware of how that infused emotion influences your interactions for the rest of the day. You might have to sit in that experience, that feeling of the emotion for a couple minutes, just really tapping into, let's say if you're doing peace, feeling what peace feels like, recalling a memory of when peace was really relevant in your life, letting it start at your heart and expand throughout your whole body taking a couple of deep breaths and really, really feeling that emotion, tapping into it. And just be aware of how positive or negative the rest of your day is and the interactions that you have with others are. So that is your homework. Try it out. And I will see you next week for week seven.